Good morning. Happy Monday to you. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, today is going to be a great day. I'm going to go ahead and throw that out there for you. Today, things are going to work in your favor. Uh, today, you won't be bothered by uh, the negative surroundings. Uh, yeah, go into your jobs, go into work, go into whatever it is that you are purposed to do on today with a positive, positive mindset and a positive attitude and uh, things will work out in your favor because all things work together for the good of us who love the Lord. Uh, today, I wanna to go back uh, in reference to something that we spoke about yesterday in the book of Daniel, chapter number one, uh, I think it's verse number seven. And what I wanna talk about it, I wanna talk about it from another perspective on today where uh, the king of the eunuchs changed Daniel's name. He changed uh, the names of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, from their original names to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, you can read it all in the book of uh, Daniel's chapter number one, what the names were changed to, things of that nature. In yesterday's message, I spoke briefly about um, what the new names meant. And so today, what I wanna talk about is the significance of the name change. And I wanna issue a challenge to each and every one that's listening on today, myself included, on protecting our names, protecting who we are, rather, because uh, you know here in, in in the in the in the Westernized world, uh, names doesn't names don't mean as much as they did uh, in the Bible times in the eastern part of the world. In the eastern part of the world, a name actually meant something. It, it wasn't just uh, what sounds good, but a name or or what was catchy or what was popular. A name actually describes the character of the person. The name actually describes the culture of the person. The name sometimes actually uh, described the prophecy of, of, of who the person would be. So names were selected very, very, very carefully instead of, um, you know, just, oh, I like that name or give my child that name. And so <clears throat> what I want to do is tie all of that in spiritually with uh, us defending our true identity but where I want to make it interesting is and the challenge is that we have to defend our identity first from ourselves before we defend it from other people and I'm going to explain in a second uh, what I mean by that but if uh, just to recap a little bit from yesterday in the Bible in Daniel's chapter number one verse seven we saw where um, Jehoiakim was given over to Nebuchadnezzar and Nebuchadnezzar took all of the young men between the ages of 13 and 17 believe it, uh, believed uh, the, eight, the, the young men from the ages of 17, 13 to 17 were taken and given uh, the king's food and given you know served from the king's table um, it's, it's, it's not hard to tell or understand that the king's food was prepared better than everybody else's food. And so I believe that what the king was doing was in, enticing uh, the, young, the young men uh, with the, the best that he had. Uh, I think it may have been some foolery involved to make them think that he was concerned about them, but what Nebuchadnezzar was doing was um, transforming them or conforming them to his world and his way. And so many of them accepted what the king was giving them, but you'll see in your reading that Daniel denied the king's food. Uh, I didn't get to that part in the sermon, but Daniel denied the king's food because um, participating uh, in, the, in, the, in the feast of those, in those times, that meant fellowship, that meant that you was accepting uh, what, what, the, what the giver was giving if you sat down at the table with them or ate the food that they ate. It was more like a covenant relationship instead of just enjoying a good meal. And so Daniel knew that he couldn't go into a covenant relationship with Nebuchadnezzar and serve God at the same time because Nebuchadnezzar had his own um, 
righteous system. He had his own gods. He had his own temples and things of that nature and the gods that he worshipped. So Nebuchadnezzar knew that he couldn't eat from the king's table and be in covenant with the king because that was what it meant and serve Yahweh, the God um, of all creations. Because the Bible, you know, teaches us, the Bible explains to us that you can't serve two masters. You're going to love one and you're going to hate the other. Um, of course, uh, the term hate a lot of times in the Bible means you're going to like one less. So you can't have uh, the, the same type of intimate relationship with two different gods. You can't have the same uh, burning desire and love for two different gods because one is going to be above the other. And so Daniel understanding that asked for permission not to eat from the king's table and the Bible will explain to us that he, he asked for pulse, which means vegetables. He wanted vegetables and water instead of the king's meat and wine. And so, uh, you know, long story short, they, they, they did a challenge and Daniel was saying that, you know, after I think it was 10 days, see that we're healthier than the ones that are eating meat. Another, you know, I'm getting into another uh, topic and situation, but let me go back to the name change because where the names changed was important because when the, the chief of the eunuchs changed the names of, of uh, Daniel and, and the three that stood with him, um, I don't remember, uh, uh, Hananiah, Isaiah, I think, and, and Mishael were Shadrach, Meshach, and Amigo's previous names. And so when the chief of the eunuchs changed their names, he wasn't just changing something that sounds good what he was doing was your name was attached to your character your name was attached to your culture and so what he was doing by changing their names was uh, attempting to change their whole mindset about who they are and this is introducing what i want to talk to you about today it was changing their whole mindset of who they were he was stripping them of their culture attempting attempting to strip them of their culture strip them of their character, strip them of their of their upbringing and their beliefs. And for example, Daniel's name, uh, the word that the name Daniel meant God is my judge. Speaking of the most high God, Yahweh, God is my judge. And they changed his name to Belteshazzar, which means uh, he, he whom Bel favors. Bel was a chief Babylon, Babylonian God. And so by changing uh, Daniel's name to Belteshazzar, I don't know, I'm having such a hard time pronouncing it today, Belteshazzar, by changing his name, I'm not even going to try to say it again today, but by changing his name, he was actually trying to change his whole God system, change his whole belief in who God was instead of, uh, instead of Yahweh judges, well, the most high God judges, the only true and living God judges, he was, he was, he was trying to uh, conform his thinking into, uh, you know, being Baal's favorite, the chief Babylonian God's favorite. So he was saying, I'm changing your name from being, uh, you know, judged by God and loved by God to being uh, Nebuchadnezzar's God's, chief's God's favorite. And so it was kind of a brainwashing trying to go on, a kind of a mind, uh, you know, a mind wash type of situation going on. And so Daniel stood strong and Daniel stayed consistent uh, with, with, with the system that he was brought up in. And so here's the challenge and here's what I want to talk about for you on today, because we, we serve as our own uh, Nebuchadnezzar sometimes. We serve as our own chief units. Uh, sometimes by changing our names, you know, and, and, and changing the character of who we are before anybody else does. Pastor, what are you talking about? What I'm talking about, again, is that, that the treatment of our subconscious minds. How many of you do something and say, oh, I'm so stupid? No, you're not stupid. You may have done something that was stupid, but you're not stupid because you're calling yourself out of your name. We like that's what I'm saying. It, we do more damage by calling ourselves out of our names other than somebody else calling us out of our names. We 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 can better we can better adjust and better deal with somebody else calling us something because we know that nothing from nothing means nothing. 
meaning that, you know, people, why, why do we get so upset when people we don't know, people we don't care for, people we may never see again, says something negative about us? That's easier for me, personally, that's easier for me to shake off because if I know I may not even see that person again, or if I do, I may not even remember who they are, and they call me out of my name, you know, that, that can roll off like uh, water on a duck's back. But the thing is, I live with myself 24 hours, seven days a week. And so I have to, I have to watch what I say to myself. I have to watch what I call myself, you know? And, and like I said, the subconscious uh, mind is gonna take everything you say literally. Your subconscious mind doesn't have a, uh, a sense of humor. It doesn't have a filter. And whatever you continue to say about yourself is what your subconscious mind is going to accept literally. So you think about it. The more, um, if you want, if you want, if you desire to lose weight, and the more you call yourself fat, then your subconscious mind is 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 going to be geared on whatever it is that's going to keep making you fat. Some of you may believe that. Some of you may not believe that. That's your prerogative. I believe it um, because when when I when I when my my blood glucose started going in the direction that it needed to go in on a consistent basis, consistent basis is when I just started telling myself, I don't, I don't, I don't eat a lot of sweets. I don't eat a lot of bread. I, I don't eat starches. And the more I tell myself that the, the, the fewer uh, starches, bread, sugars, sweets, and things of that nature that I take in. Some of you who know, I know uh, Sister Penny and Sister Mary knows very well uh, how much I used to drink soda. I used to drink diet soda all of the time. Um, my doctor told me, they told me, and my doctor told me that, you know, it wasn't good for me. So what did I need, what did I need to do? I needed to adjust my mind, tell myself I'm not a soda drinker and I don't drink much of it anymore. But you know, I, what I want you to understand is and I, it may not happen the very first time. This is a daily continual thing. You have to be consistent in what you feed your mind before you actually see the actions taking place. So the challenge is, and what I wanna to say to you today is, and this is a challenge not only for the week, but this is a challenge uh, for the rest of your life. Stop saying negative things, stop thinking negative thoughts and applying it to yourself. It's not gonna be an easy transition, it's not going to happen at the drop of a dime, but the key word is do it consistently. I was reading a book, um, I think it was the Silva, mind control techniques and before you start you know tripping and going over the ledge is not to control other people's minds it's to control your own mind and that is feeding yourself positivity and and is 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 it causes habit changes and one of the things that it says to tell yourself every day it says to tell yourself that negative thoughts and words negative thoughts and words will have no influence on me today. Negative thoughts and suggestions, that's what it was. Negative thoughts and suggestions will not have an influence on me today. Negative thoughts and suggestions will not have an influence on me today. And what that does is, is it, it programs your, your, your inner being, it programs your subconscious not to allow, because thoughts, and suggestions are not always coming from other people. Your thoughts are always coming internally. So that means you're gonna have the negative thoughts. They're gonna, they're gonna come because we're, we've been so programmed to do it, but don't allow these negative thoughts to change your name. I'm going back to Daniel now. Don't allow the enemy of negative thoughts, the enemy of, of, of negativism, don't allow it to change who you are. Hey Amen. If, if you know and believe that you are a treasured child of God. You know and believe that you are blessed of God and his blessings make you rich and add no sorrow. As the word declares. And if you know these things, don't let negative thoughts and suggestions in your own head uh, um, de de deflect you from what you do and what you believe that God said about you. Amen. And the other thing was, it says to repeat this every day. Every day, in every way, I'm getting better. I, I, I substitute better for healing because I'm, I'm still trusting God for healing. Every day in every way, I'm being healed. I, lo I love that because uh, with 
with, with the stripes of Jesus, the Bible declares that I am healed. So I declare that in my life every day. My time is now coming to an, uh, a close. Let's pray, and, and I'm going to wish you a good day. Father, thank you for today's devotional. Thank you, Lord God, for your word. Your word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our pathway. Thank you, Lord God, for blessing us to hide the word in our hearts that we won't sin against it. Heavenly Father, now I pray that the challenge is accepted. I'm accepting the challenge. I pray the challenge is accepted by the listeners, Heavenly Father, to continue to speak power to ourselves, continue to speak success to ourselves, continue to speak good things to ourselves. Let us not change our own names, Heavenly Father. We are who you say we are and, and nothing less. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Sunday, we're celebrating our 14th year anniversary together. Invite your friends, invite your family. Assembly Chapel, I need you there strong. I need you there uh, before 10 o'clock. Pastor Woodson is coming. He is on fire to be there. I talked to him uh, the other day. I'll talk to him again this week. Uh, we, let's, let's just come and celebrate in the name of our Lord. Amen.